I didn't have much choice in my taking up a Bharatanatyam. My mother, who is from England, moved to Australia and decided to learn Bharatanatyam when she was there. Uh, Bharatanatyam is what led my mum to meet my father and after they got married, my mum actually danced with me for a majority of her pregnancy. So my dance training started negative nine months. And then as soon as I was born, my mum went straight back into Bharatanatyam class and I was taken with her. So I've literally been dancing since the day I was born. So the choice matter wasn't really there. However, I think it really uh, kindled a love of dance from a very, very early age. When I was little, I used to trip, like turn on cassettes and run around the house performing full margams, just you know, dancing and jumping around and driving absolutely everyone insane. So my love for dance really started to concrete itself when I moved to India when I was 18 from Perth and I went to Kalakshetra, the Rukmini Devi College of Fine Arts in Chennai and I was in Kalakshetra for seven years. I did a postgraduate diploma and after that I was very fortunate that during my time in Kalakshetra, uh, Leela Sampson was the director. And I remember when I passed out, she called me to the office and I said, Akka, I'm going to go back to Australia. And she said, for what? Like, what was the point of working so hard for all this time? And you're going to go back. You should stay. You should dance. And so I stayed and I danced. And <laughs> um, I've now been in Chennai, I think, 16 years. And I just keep staying because I keep dancing. And uh, though the journey is tough and though things change and you know the past two years specifically have been absolutely insane insane my love for dance is probably the one thing that hasn't changed and if anything it's only gotten more and more strong so yeah that's my history of me and Bharatanatyam and the love affair that I have with this crazy thing that has consumed my entire life being interracial is a very, very different experience that actually really only other interracial children will understand. Growing up both as a Western kid and an Indian kid at the same time, it's very confusing for a lot of the time. Um, my grandparents, uh, my living grandparents, uh, are white. They're from Scotland, lived in a town just outside of Manchester called Lee. My mum was born and brought up there. That family believes family dinner is shepherd's pie. My grandmother thinks that tuna is vegetarian. Whereas my dad's family is a very staunch Indian family that follows a lot of religious practices. We, so I have the best of both worlds in very literal senses. And I grew up with this um, a dichotomy of both for a long long time and it was you can comp comp compartmentalize those things when you're young when I went to India I found it very very difficult because I even now a lot of people perceive me to be white they think that I'm white because my name is Christopher however having lived in India for 16 years I think of myself more Indian than I do even possibly Australian when I was in when I was in college, it was very, very difficult because there was nobody else like me. There was no one else that spoke like me. So it was really, really tough. And for a long time, I tried to, uh, I tried to conform to the ideas of what other people thought of me. And I thought that was very, very important. And it really wasn't until I graduated from college and started to really experiencing life again outside of the bubble that is Kalakshetra that I realized that it actually is the most wonderful and unique part of myself, is that I am from a diverse household, that I can listen to Britney Spears and then listen to MS Subalakshmi in the same Spotify playlist. And it means it doesn't, it's not abrupt to me. For me, that makes perfect sense. And that actually being individual and the makeup that makes each of us in like our own selves is so important when we bring it into our dance practice that just because you weren't born in the place that the dance form originates doesn't mean that you have a less connection with it. So I think that your identity is something that you need to walk into your practice, your classrooms, 
and find the you inside of the dance. Don't try and make the dance form uh, fit in. You, you, there's no preconceived idea that you have to fit on. It's about you finding how you can enter it and find truth within it, find truth within those lyrics, find truth within those movements. That's what's really, really important. And I think that understanding your identity, mixed or not mixed, NRI, born and brought up in Mylapore, it makes no difference. It's just important to bring yourself into your dance practice. I find that working with various choreographers around the world that Bharatanatyam in each place I go to has a little bit of a different flavor. The, the Sambar Bodhi is always different wherever I go. Um, I'm very, very fortunate to have worked with Leela Samson in her, in her dance company Spanda and I've taught extensively with them. That was a once in a lifetime kind of uh, experience. It was dancing the equivalent of the best chocolate cake you've ever eaten in the world. Um, learning choreographies from Kalakshatra was also very important. I've worked with dancers in the UK such as Maven Ku, Sita Patel, I've attended um, the Akram Khan Classical Intensive. That's a different type of Bharatanatyam and I think what the UK does with Bharatanatyam is quite different to what working with US choreographers, like I've worked in collaboration with friends that of mine like Preeti Ramaprasad and Nadi Thek. Those dancers bring a different point of view and I think that that's the beauty of Bharatanatyam is that each place that Bharatanatyam goes to and each person that you work with will inform your own artistic practice and that's why it's so so important to diversify yourself outside of the one Bani or school that you adhere to. Working with a diverse range of practitioners, watching a diverse range of kacheris, watching different performers will inform you of different types of aesthetic which will allow you to become a stronger performer overall. So if, if you want advice, my advice would be if someone invites you to do a project, do it. The worst thing that will happen is you don't like it. But in not liking it, you'll understand what you do like and what you want to do and it will make you understand where you want to go and where you, what you want to do with your dance journey. Working with Stellaka for Krishna Name of Hearts has been a very enjoyable process. One of the pieces that I will be presenting is a Varnam in the Ragam Sri Ranjini that was composed for Srimati Rukmini Devi to dance in Bombay. The lyrics were composed by Chinna Sharada teacher's father. The music was set by Taiga Varadachari. And the only recording that I was able to find of it was by M.D. Ramanathan. So this piece was conceived by the greats and legends of Kalakshatra. Working on the same thing with Stellaka and developing it through a very, very enjoyable and organic process has led to something that um, I haven't done in a long time. It's not, it's, the choreography is very different to how I normally think and how I normally perform. A lot of it is going back to the roots of the Kalakshatra school and exploring those mov movement vocabularies compared to what could be considered popular in Chennai. Um, as a whole, working with someone like Stellaka is always enjoyable. It's always tough but fun um, and yeah the, all, the overall production has lots of different points of view which I think is rare in a kacheri. It's not just one choreographer's point of view. I think Stellaka really encouraged each and every member in the cast to really think as much as they could. So it, within this one performance you actually have quite a diverse point, a diverse range of points of view which I think is very very special. The, uh, the music of the show is absolutely fantastic. We were so lucky to have worked in conjunction with the Carnatic vocalist Vignesh Ishwar and a very senior Kalakshatra teacher Sai Shankar sir. The Natwanga Manjatis have been composed by my very dear friend and batchmate from Kalakshatra Sudarshini Ayer. Mardangam has been done by Shiva Prasad. Violin by Ishwar Ramakrishnan and flute by Shruti Sagar. The music is beautiful. The my music is also very diverse. The varanam is in Sanskrit, which isn't very common. Um, 
there's pieces from the Silapadikaram, there's music from, there's Karnada music, there's Swati Tirunakshitis. It's a very, very, very diverse range of music. And I, I really would encourage people to buy tickets because it is a smorgasbord of different ideas and different aesthetics all brought together on one stage to celebrate Krishna and his many, many forms and why we all love dancing about him so much.